Good morning, and welcome to another Forestry Friday, brought to you by the North Dakota Forest Service. My name is Jeff Smetty. I'm the Towner State Nursery Manager here north of Towner, North Dakota, and uh, today we're going to visit about our greenhouse tree production. Here's a photo of our greenhouse that we built in 2010. It's uh, 120 feet long by 42 feet wide, and we have a capacity of 120,000 trees at one time. I'll highlight some of the main processes we do in production here. After we have our plans in place and figure out what we want to seed and grow for the upcoming season, then, then we will sterilize our containers and fill them. And then we seed one of two ways with an automated seeder and by hand. Uh, we, our first seeding start out in late February, usually around the 20th of each year. Once the seedlings reach desired size, which uh, the first ones will come out in late May, all the way into the end of July, they go out to a shade house and they continue to grow outside, out in the open, until freeze up and finally we will extract them from the containers grade package and freeze them for spring shipments so the ones we're growing this winter are for sale in the spring of 2024. our first main process we do before we can seed is to sterilize all the containers. And we do this by submerging them in a hot water vat for three minutes at 180 degrees. And this takes care of diseases in the greenhouse. And we can do all the containers we need for one season in a single day. So after they're sterilized next, then we will fill all the containers. And we do two types. Uh, one's called a Vent 91 copper block, and the other is called a HECO 28. And um, we can adjust this machine and do different styles of containers. We generally use two types of soil, one for conifers, one for hardwoods and we can do about a thousand or so a day and we can get everything we we need for the greenhouse in two days here's our precision forestry auto seeder we can seed multiple seeds per cavity we generally will use three or four seeds we're doing the vent 91 copper blocks here where we there's 91 cells. We can do a tray in less than a minute. And overall, we have been doing over 30,000 cells or trees in one day. We also do a fair amount of hand seeding in the greenhouse and these are seeds that are too large like acorns or oak seed hackberry uh, other species that are seeded wet like juneberry in the photo there uh, juniper cedar species like that uh, need to be hand seeded and most folks will do around 2,000 cells each day. Here our crew is hand seeding eastern red cedar where they are placing eight seeds per cell. 
Here's our ponderosa pine after about one week after seeding. Here only after 10 days, the greenhouse is turning green. We can grow two crops of bur oak in the greenhouse in one season. One started in February and the second seeding would be started in late May. Here's what our oak crop looks like after three months in the greenhouse. It's ready to move outside. Rocky Mountain Juniper, our native juniper west of the Missouri River. And this is a typical size for what we're looking for, 12 inch plus in about six months. Here's what our Juneberry crop looks like in six months. We grade them at eight inch plus and uh, they're ready to go. Here's a full greenhouse after two months of growing. Here's our shade house where the stock has moved out of the greenhouse as they reach grade, usually it's eight inches, anywhere from late May until July when the greenhouse is completely empty by August 1st. This is a Colorado spruce plug. Uh, you can see that six inches of soil, eight cubic inch, and the tree is about a foot tall. This is how we bundle each species. These are in bundles of the 10. We have Meyer spruce, Scotch pine, and Ponderosa pine. And then they're boxed anywhere from 50 to 100 per box. Counterstate Nursery, growing trees for tomorrow. Here we're sterilizing containers in our hot water bath. It's like working in a sauna in this, this building. We're, we are able to do all the containers that we need one, one day with five or six folks uh, working with. This takes care of diseases in the greenhouse. Next, we fill our containers. Well, it's a lot of activity here. We uh, run an algicide over the containers, again for disease and also Get some wet so the soil doesn't just fall through. It helps it stick into the containers. So the containers are tamped, excess brushed off, and then we're placing them on pallets. These bigger cells are two by two inch by six inch deep. And they're used for some of our larger seed like oak, hackberry, aspen. The automated seeder is 
really a nice, nice piece of equipment. Uh, very efficient. You can do one of these copper blocks in 50 seconds. Uh, very precise. With three seats per cavity. Once a block is seated, the grit put on top of it to keep the saw from washing out. You notice the dibble bar there going in each cavity. It's where it's picking up the seed, put it back in, and it'll drop it down those tubes. Very efficient. Mm. The second season mm. produced at about 30,000 per day. for their place on the cedar they're packed so we've got a system here usually it takes four four workers to complete the task and then one plus one person hauling to the greenhouse right after they're seated We usually place 56 containers on a pallet, which is enough for four tables in our greenhouse. Each table will contain 1,274 cells. It always seems to be cold each February when we do this. These, uh, these tables on rolling casters are really nice. Um, we can move them around when we need to. When they're mature, the, the tables just get wheeled out the greenhouse outside in the shade house through that overhead door. It takes four man hours to clear the house where the way we used to do it taking each block it took around 48 man hours so it's a huge huge advantage hello i'm dominic anderson the nursery specialist at the towner north dakota state forestry nursery one job i have here is i'm the lead grow in the greenhouse and one tool we have at our disposal is a precision forestry needle cedar and how the cedar works is we run a copper block through the front and then it'll hit this switch and that'll activate sensors that tell it when it can dibble the dirt which puts little little holes into the soil and then vacuum needle cedars will drop seed through these tubes right into the dibble at the precise depth that the seed needs to grow and then Grit will be lightly put on top and then brushed over to help prevent washout. The needle seedler is a amazing tool that we have, but it can't do everything. One thing that it can't do is wet or moist seed, and that's why we need multiple hands in the greenhouse that can help seed cedar, juniper, and juneberry, oak, seeds that are too big or too wet or moist that they stick to the cedar and they just cannot run through it. So Dominic, how many cells uh, did we seed with this machine in the past two days? Ideally, if all the trees sprout, we will have at least 64,000 trees in each cell that will be in the greenhouse. Pretty amazing. You show me those needles. Um, what's that tray there for? That is where the seed will vibrate so it's level constantly so the vacuum needles can pick it up and drop it off 
in rapid order. And also we generally uh, malt, uh, seed more than one seed per cavity. So most of the, the pine, spruce, and other species we're growing, we're dropping three or four seeds per cavity to try to get close to 100%. So depending on germination, if a seed lot has poor germination, we'll try to put more seeds in. And if a seed has higher germination, we'll put less seed in because it's very expensive to run a greenhouse. So we want to grow as many trees as possible without losing any available space in the greenhouse during growing seasons. Very good. Um, what do you like best about this new seeder? I love how it's just super efficient time saving, um, people can make errors. This is precise. It tells you, you can put in how many seeds you want per cavity and it'll do it. There's no eyeball work or counting each time the machine does all the work. Are there <clears throat> some limitations um, with seed, uh, if it's clean or not, or if there's pitch in the seed or uh, does it, is it easy to work on? Things like that. One thing we have to watch out for is someone has to be watching the hopper constantly because there are, are unclean seed lots where there's pitch in there and they will clog the needles. Uh, it, unclogging is fairly easy. They come off super easy and then there is a blow option on, built into the machine to clean out the needles. You pause it, clean it out, and then it'll pick up right where it left off. And uh, explain the different size needles for us. So most seed comes in different sizes. Um, our larger seed is Ponderosa. Some smaller seed is Black Hills or Buffalo Berries. So if you use a bigger size needle on smaller seed, it'll pick up multiple seeds at one time. So you kind of want to fine tune it so it only picks up one seed at a time or at least two. It's not going to get one all the time, but if we can get one or two, that's pretty good. Sounds good. Uh, how many years have you had this machine? This will be the second year we've used it, and we're learning something new every time we're using it. We're fine tuning it as we go. So, and it's super efficient. Sounds good. Thank you. One seed at a time or at least two. It's not going to get one all the time, but if we can get one or two, that's pretty good. Sounds good. Uh, how many years have you had this machine? This will be the second year we've used it, and we're learning something new every time we're using it. We're fine-tuning it as we go, and it's super efficient. Sounds good. Thank you. Some seed is stratified in wet sand, and before we can actually, actually see it, we have to wash the sand off through a screen. And this happens to be eastern red cedar. You can see all the, the seed there once the sand is washed away. Uh, there's no way of doing germination test on this prior, so we seed. We use a lot of seed, uh, approximately eight seeds per cabin. That's what the ladies are doing here. Everyone does it a little bit different, but very similar. Depth is the big key not getting the seed placed too dead deep. How many seeds are you putting in there? It's supposed to be like eight.
Well, this afternoon we're hand seeding here at Towner State Nursery in our greenhouse with our plug production. Today we're visiting with Lorraine. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Lorraine. I started here at the nursery almost six years this spring. I live locally. I thoroughly enjoy this job. It gets me out of the house. And it's a social. Big things are social out here. Nice. What's your favorite part of seeding in the wintertime? I get it now, the cold. Where it's minus 23 degrees outside, it's nice and warm here in the greenhouse. So you start shedding your winter coats and sweatshirts and whatnot. So that's one of the big pluses. What are you seeding today? We are seeding Rocky Mountain junipers. We change furniture probably every day or every other day to a different species. So. Um, and how many seeds are you putting per cavity? There goes eight seeds per cavity, and there are ninety, not ninety-one, ninety-one. So we seed a lot of seeds in one of those, in one of these. Uh, how many um, trees do you think you seed it per day on average? Anywhere between two and three thousand trees. It depends upon um, how busy I want to be <laughs> or how much talking as ladies do. So, but, yeah, that's that average is probably close to three, two thousand a day. Okay, can you demonstrate? Um, how you see it and what you're doing? Okay, sure. This is what we call a tray or whatever, and these are called the cells. So you can see make a hole in each cell. You go down the whole line and you drop in eight seeds. This species crop takes you have eight seeds per bin, per cell, excuse me, and then you cover them up. When you get done filling it up, then you cover it with grit, which helps keep the moisture in, and so that they stay moist, and when you water them, they don't dry out as fast. Very good. Well, thanks, Lorraine. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this session of Forestry Fridays. Uh, for more information, of course, you can visit our website, Facebook, or the Forestry Friday YouTube channel. Thank you.